And so it really, I think, you know, w when you look at all these things together and then the mechanisms of how fiber degradation attenuates inflammation, um, it really looks like our lack of fiber in the Western world in our diet is deteriorating the microbiota, and this is predisposing us to these, you know, tens of different diseases. And it's, I think, it's very unlikely that there are tens of different causes for these diseases. I think that inflammation is the common denominator in the microbiota, and our diet is really at the heart of this. Yeah, well, inflammation is a driver of aging. So you're talking about these diseases, which many are age-related, you know, so you're, it's, it's a really, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's at the heart of all these diseases, and I think that, you know, it really is a, a driver of the aging process itself. Um, in terms of the heart disease, that's the number one killer in the United States, and, you know, as Erica mentioned, you, when you're starving your gut microbiome of this fiber, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the bacteria starts to break down the mucin, and gut cells possibly aren't making as much mucin, then when those immune cells become in contact with the bacteria, they, they start to kill it because that's what they're programmed to do. Immune cells see bacteria, okay, well that's foreign, I'm gonna kill it. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is they, they kill bacteria, this releases uh, lipopolysaccharide, endotoxin, um, and what, what happens when you release endotoxin, it gets released in the bloodstream while well, your body has an adaptive response to it. It, it produces more um, cholesterol. VLDL, and the reason for that is because there's binding sites, the LDL receptors on the LDL and also on HDL cholesterol um, bind endotoxin as a way of, of sopping it up to protect your body. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to go into sepsis, mm -hmm. and so you're producing more cholesterol. That's why when you're in an inflamed state, um, you produce more cholesterol, and that's really a, a link that I think between inflammation and heart disease. And it is also a reason why you should always get your cholesterol measured more than once because you may be sick or stressed mm -hmm. and you're inflamed and then your cholesterol is really high and your doctor might go, whoa, right. uh, let's get you on statins and maybe that's not the best scenario. But I wanna get back to the fiber because you're, you're talking about how important it is to get fiber and how you know we don't get as much fiber as you know our, our predecessors or whatever you want to call it. Um, what kind of fiber, what kind of food sources do you think are, do you take a broad spectrum approach where you try to get all different types of fiber um, to, you know, because we don't know, like you just, Justin mentioned, we don't know what all these gut, you know, bacteria mm -hmm. are producing. So can you talk a little bit about the types of fiber, I mean, how much fiber? Yeah, so if you look at, you know, the average American is eating around 10 to 15 grams of dietary fiber per day. The U.S. government recommends that we eat more along the lines of 30 to 35. So just by that measure, we're, we're pretty fiber deprived. If you look at these traditional populations that we study in our lab, these hunter-gatherers that live in Tanzania, they're eating on the order of 100 to 150 grams of dietary fiber per day. So it's clear that the amount of fiber that we're consuming as Americans is something that you know could be on the order of 10 times less of what our ancestors probably ate in the past. And so, you know, there, there's this issue of an amount of fiber that we just have to increase that to increase the food that's getting to our gut bacteria. But then there's also this issue of the diversity, the different types of fiber. So some people say to us, well, can I just, you know, take a whole bunch of Metamucil, get my 35 grams, and then I'm good. But what we're finding is that the diversity, the different types of complex carbohydrates that are found in dietary fiber are important. So you could imagine if you ate just one type of complex carbohydrate, there would be, say, a handful of bacteria that are really good at metabolizing or fermenting that type of carbohydrate. Those would get very abundant, maybe at the expense of other types of microbes. But if you're eating many different types of carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, then you can foster a community, kind of an ecosystem that's more rich and robust. So if you are eating, say, 20 different types of dietary fibers, then you're, you're providing sustenance for many different types of microbes that might specialize in different types of carbohydrate consumption. And that appears to be important, this having a diverse community of bacteria in the gut. And so we think about it sometimes like as a, you know, as like a, a rainforest, you want forests or these ecosystems tend to be more stable when there's a lot of complexity of life on them. If you have, say, just a lawn of only grass, then one small thing happens and that would harm that grass and then everything dies or, or it's unstable. But if you have an ecosystem that has grass and trees and shrubs and all different things, then it's less likely to collapse after just one event. 
And so that's how we like to think about it. You want a diverse community of microbes in your gut, and the best way to foster that is to provide them a diverse amount of substrate, a diverse amount of complex carbohydrates. So specifically, what foods would you say would provide that diverse? Um, so we um, think that foods, so fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes are all foods that are high in dietary fiber. And so we try to consume many different types of each of those. And one sort of easy way to do this is to eat seasonally. So if you eat foods that are in season, you're more likely to eat over the span of a year a diverse collection of fruits and vegetables. Um, I don't know if you have some other. I mean, the other um, piece of advice that I would give is just to avoid food that comes in wrappers or packages. I mean, I, I just think that um, you know the processed food manufacturers have not caught on to the importance of dietary fiber and health. And if you go to most of these processed foods, if they do claim high fiber, it's usually a single type of fiber that they're supplementing with, either inulin or psyllium husk or chicory or something like that. And it doesn't provide the breadth of fiber that you would get if you were to go to a produce section and pick a handful of vegetables to cook. Yeah. So, so I just think that, that um, the, until the processed food people get on board with the importance of fiber, it's good just to avoid um, f food that comes in packages.